patuloy na nagbibigay serbisyo. Pag-asa at saya. GMA Regional TV Kapuso ng Bawat Pilipino Good evening. This is your GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The biggest, the latest as local news matters. Tecwa Campo. Sara Hilomen Velasco. Real Soroche broadcasting live from GMA Complex in Davao City. We'd like to welcome our Capuso viewers from Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. Tonight, we will be joined by GMA Regional TV correspondents Kim Bandaralipe of Balitang Amianan, John Sala of One Western Visayas and Jandi Esteban of One Mindanao. You know, Tech and Real, this week has been challenging but rewarding as we continue to cover important events all over the country and bring this relevant news that matter to our Kapuso. That's right, Sarah. We also have our counterparts from other regions. Rain Palino of GMA Regional TV Bicol and Alan Domingo of Balitang Bista. For the headlines. Total confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Philippines reached 16,634. Recoveries now are 3,720 and 942 deaths. More areas in the country will be placed under GCQ. Hundreds of OFWs and stranded persons finally return home. And Christmas came early in Davao City as Santa Soldier goes around town. As the country transitions to the new normal, COVID-19 cases are still on the rise. As the Department of Health records over 16,000 cases, more have succumbed to the disease, but thousands have already recovered. We have this report. As of May 29, confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country have jumped to 16,634 after 1,046 new cases were recorded. The death toll is now at 942, while 122 patients have newly recovered, bringing the total of recoveries to 3,720. In North Central Luzon, there are 659 COVID-19 confirmed cases, with 73 deaths and 461 recoveries. In the latest report from the DOH Central for Health Development, Region 1 has 64 confirmed cases. Region 3 or Central Luzon now has 548 COVID-19 cases, while 47 confirmed cases are recorded in the Cordillera region. A COVID-19 patient in Asingan, Pangasinan spoke up after he received discriminatory comments since he was tested positive on May 17. Kaya wala akong nakasalamuwa na kahit sino sa Dilan Paurido. Ultimo nanay ko, Hindi ko nakausap. Instead, he wished that people would just pray in this time of pandemic. Bicol Region has recorded 74 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 56 are from Albay, 12 in Camarines Sur, 4 in Camarines Norte, 1 in Sorsogon, and 1 in Catanduanes. The province of Masbate has still no COVID-19 case. One of the latest cases is a 10-year-old girl from Labo, Camarines Norte, who had close contact with Bicol case number 61. Meanwhile, COVID-positive cases continue to rise in Cebu City with 89 new cases as of May 29. 
DOH Central Visayas Center for Health Development reports a total COVID-19 cases of 2,693 with 412 recoveries and 55 deaths. This brings the total number of active cases to 2,226. These cases are broken down as follows. Bohol 3, Cebu Province 112, Cebu City 1,837, Lapu-Lapu City 42, Mandawa City 232, while Negros Oriental and Sigur remain COVID-free. Western Visayas recorded 113 confirmed COVID-19 cases as of May 29. 82 have recovered while the death toll remains at 10. 35 of the cases are OFW repatriates. 20 cases are from Iloilo Province, 19 are from Iloilo City, 14 are from Antique. Bacolod City has 10 cases, Aklan has 6 cases, Capiz also has 6. 3 cases are from the province of Negros Occidental, while the province of Guimaras remains COVID-19 free. Meanwhile, Mindanao has a total of 569 confirmed COVID-19 cases, with 45 deaths and 204 recoveries. Davao Region has recorded a high of 52 new cases of COVID-19 with 30 cases from Davao City, 9 from Davao del Sur, 1 from Davao del Norte, and after more than two months, Davao Oriental reported 12 new cases. Eight of these are OFWs who arrived through sweeper flights from Manila to Davao City, and four with a travel history in Maguindanao. Davao Region now has a total of 329 confirmed COVID-19 cases, 28 deaths, and 138 recoveries. In northern Mindanao, the 63-year-old husband and 42-year-old daughter of a deceased COVID-19 patient from Sitio Makanhan, Barangay Carmen in Cagayan de Oro City tested positive for the virus. Prior to the patient's death, she along with her husband lined to get their SAP subsidy. The region now has recorded 29 cases, 8 deaths and 14 recoveries. In Cotabato City, a 9-month-old baby boy is the youngest COVID-19 case recorded in the city. He was exposed to his 11-year-old brother who also tested positive for COVID-19. Soxargen has a total of 24 confirmed COVID-19 cases, 1 death and 14 recoveries. In Zamboanga Peninsula, a 47-year-old male who is a dialysis patient in Lamitan in Basilan is the province's first COVID-19 case. The region now has 158 reported COVID-19 cases. Its number of recoveries rose to 28 with 4 deaths. Caraga region has also reported its fifth case, a 65-year-old male from Agusan del Norte who is asymptomatic and had a travel history from Manila last February. The region also recorded three recoveries. Confirmed COVID-19 cases in BARM have doubled from last week after 12 stranded students in Cebu who availed of the Balik Provincia program have tested positive for COVID-19 upon their return home to Maguindanao. BARM now has 24 cases, 4 deaths and 7 recoveries. I am Sara Hiloman Velasco for GMA Regional TV. The implementation of the new normal is expected to transform the economic activities in North Central Luzon. Kim Bandarlipe of GMA Regional TV Balitang Amyanan tells us more live. Kim. Back to business but not business as usual. North Central Luzon residents transition to new normal but needs to observe disciplinary measures. Carrying her suitcases and pasalubong from Hong Kong, OFW Mylene Benedito finally arrived at her home province of Abra after almost two months of waiting. Mylene is one of the 12 OFWs who returned to Abra through the Balik Provincia program. According to the provincial OFW desk, they still have to undergo a 14-day quarantine at their respective municipal isolation areas and take a rapid antibody test. Masaya po. Kasi makikita ko na po yung pamilya ko, pero hindi pa din po kasi hindi ko rin sila makakasama. In Lingayen, Pangasinan, rental gown shop owner Joy Mararak painstakingly folds her gowns that were usually rented for occasions like weddings. With the new health protocols of the community quarantine limiting the number of people in wedding entourage, owners of shops renting out gowns and formal wear face a reduction in their business. Malaking bawa sa income namin kasi syempre walang, wala nang gagamit ng mga gown masyado. 
Meanwhile, in Villasis, Pangasinan, five Carindiria owners were caught violating the takeout policy under the guidelines of the new normal. In a video taken by a policeman, customers were seen dining inside the eateries. Authorities warned residents and owners to observe the protocols of the new normal. In the Gupan City, a new number coding scheme is in place to help lessen the number of cars in the central business district. Jeepney drivers who secured a special permit from the LTFRB will be allowed to resume operations. The minimum fare set by authorities is at 9 pesos for the first 4 kilometers, with an additional 1 peso and 50 centavos for every succeeding kilometer. Yung po yung masakit. Tignan naman na lang yung akpro na unit na bumiyahe. Tapos hindi pa siya. Alimbawa, pupunta ng Dagupan. Alam natin ang Dagupan na central business ito hindi sila mga kagretsyo, bababa sila sa mga porters. Pedicab drivers in Mangaldan, Pangasinan appealed to allow more PUVs to resume operations. Only 10 IDs used as pass to operate were issued to each pedicab association. Due to the limited number of pedicabs allowed on the streets, a driver will only be allowed to operate once a week, while some not at all. Uh, pag napatunayan na gano'n ang ano, i-complicate na, i-impound namin yung mga kawan. Hindi sila makakapasada hanggat hindi matapos yung kwa. In Ilocos Sur, taxi drivers are required to wear gloves and face mask and to take their passengers' temperature. On their part, the passengers should pay the exact fare or exact payment online to minimize hand contact. Flag down rate is still at 40 pesos. Meanwhile, this famous church in Ilocos Sur is now open to the public. But due to health protocols, the number of visitors is being limited. Only one row is allowed for devotees. Signages were installed reminding visitors to observe social distancing. Sarah, starting June 1 until June 15, the whole of Region 3, Baguio City and Pangasinan will be placed under GCQ, while Dagupan City along with other provinces of Region 1 and Cordillera will be placed under modified GCQ. Sarah? Thank you, Kim Bandarlipe. Six provinces in Western Visayas will be downgraded to modified general community quarantine starting Monday, except for Iloilo City that will remain under GCQ. John Sal of GMA Regional TV1 Western Visayas has the details live. John. The provinces and the cities in Western Visayas are now preparing to transition from general community quarantine to modified general community quarantine. Under the MGCQ, non-essential establishments, just like massage centers, movie houses, and bars, will resume operation but will still be regulated. Based on the IATF Resolution No. 40, the provinces of Aklan, Antique, Capiz, Guimaras, Iloilo, and Negros Occidental as well as Bacolod City will transition to modified general community quarantine on Monday, June 1. The governors of the six provinces in the region decided to implement the One Panay Free Movement, where residents in the region are free to travel between provinces without requiring quarantine passes or undergoing a 14-day quarantine. May arak man di akong kita ng mga border control not to check on documents but to see if may fever ka ba, thermal check up. Are you, are you having a social distancing? So we decided upon ourselves na hindi na pong pabagayan. We are going to help each other. However, local chief executives are appealing to the national IATF that airports and seaports remain closed for commercial trips. Only repatriated OFWs and returning stranded residents will be allowed to enter the provinces and must still undergo the safety protocols required by the Department of Health. Una, unta lang ni Anay mga stranded individuals na kung may mga negrensis pa ta dito sa Panay, papuli o naton sila. In the same manner, kung may mga tiga antike, kapis, aklan, of course, Iloilo or Gimaras na ari di subong sa, sa uh, Negros, papuli on taman sila. Since border and travel restrictions were implemented in March, the local economy of these provinces were affected, which is why Iloilo Governor Arthur Defensor Jr. sees the downgrade as a positive development in the gradual rehabilitation of the province. At least siguro it's a validation nga somehow no ang ginimo nato namang investments nato sang nagligat ang aton mga sakripisyo pagpasensya pagpaumod 
Siguro nagbunga man kiti why why ang aton nga transmission in the exponential. However, Iloilo City will be the only LGU in the region that will remain under GCQ according to the IATF resolution. Mayor Jerry Trenyas has appealed to the IATF to reclassify the city to modify GCQ to jumpstart the recovery of the city's economic loss. Then, uh, Uh, kabay pa na makita man nila kung ano ang aton yung mga gina pang obrador eh. Tapos kung ano pang kinadla na aton nga ulubrahon para nga malayon ang aton nga mga gina pang obrador sa priority sa national government. Trenyas assured that Iloilo City is ready for MGCQ especially since the city has enough isolation facilities and unaccredited sub-national laboratory. Meanwhile, more than 1,500 repatriated overseas Filipino workers arrive in the region since Sunday through sweeper flights and malasakit voyages. Tech just an update that the National Interagency Task Force officially declared Iloilo City to also be under modified general community quarantine based on the IATF Resolution Number 41. This means that the entire Western Visayas will now be under MGCQ. Tech? Well, that's good news. Thank you, John Sala. One of the most popular words that we hear nowadays is quarantine. So where does the word quarantine come from? Let's find out in this report of Ivy Hernando of Jimmy Regional TV, Palitang Amyana. When the World Health Organization declares COVID-19 as a pandemic, the word quarantine has become a byword as nations around the globe reel from the effects of the virus. But where is the word quarantine derived from? Hindi ko alam kung saan nagmula yung salitang quarantine po. Sa tingin mo, saan nang galing yung salitang quarantine? Wala akong idea pero katunog niya yung 40 sa quarantine. In the mid-1300s, Europe was hit by the bubonic plague, killing one-third of the continent's population. A law called Trentino was passed, requiring ships from infected countries to go on 30-day isolation. From the Italian word Trentino or 30-day period of isolation, they extended it to 40 days or Quarantino, the root of the English word quarantine. This is because scholars and health officials believe the number 40 has a great significance in the events of the Bible. 40 days of prayer and fasting of the Lord Jesus Christ, isa yon. And then si, uh, uh, si Noah inside the ark. It took uh, 40 days and 40 nights. Jonah, on the other hand, warned the people of the city Nineveh that the city would be overthrown in 40 days. Because of the warning, the people repented and were saved by God. Moses, who they call as one of the greatest leaders of Israel, surrendered his life to God. Kinuha niya si Moses at kinarantin siya for 40 years. Kasi napakalaki yung gagampanan niya bilang isang leader. Israelites also took 40 years before they arrived at the promised land. Na every time na magkasala ang, 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 ang nation of Israel, pinaparusahan sila ng Diyos. Pero the good thing is, magbibigay siya ng leader para, para sila ay uh, makabalik sa Diyos. The number 40 is mentioned 146 times in the Bible. According to Pastor Arzadon, this is not by accident, but God's plan. 40 days in the Bible is said to be a period of testing. Together with cameraman Norman Raka, I am Ivy Hernando for Jimmy Regional TV. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. The family of a domestic helper who died in Hong Kong is seeking for justice and assistance as her body was brought home in Camarines Sur. Rain Palino of GMA Regional TV Bicol has the details live. Rain. Sarah, after a month, the remains of a domestic helper in Hong Kong has been brought home to Camarinesor. She was allegedly maltreated by her employers. The remains of Gretchen Ibreja arrived in San Fernando, Camarinesor last Wednesday. Gretchen, a 34-year-old single mother, left last November to work as a domestic helper in Hong Kong. According to her sister Myra, 
After just two months in Hong Kong, Gretchen filed a complaint for verbal abuse against her employers. Gretchen reported it to her agency and asked for the termination of her contract, which was supposed to end last February. However, due to the rising number of COVID-19 cases in Hong Kong, Gretchen was not able to leave and was forced to stay the same employer. By April 14, the alleged physical abuse started. According to Myra, her sister sent photos of herself with bruises. Gretchen had plans of returning to the Philippines last April 24, but on April 21, she was found unconscious inside the bathroom by her employers. Myra believes that there was a foul play. Impossible to go to the pagkain. Tapos maya maya naman po, um, tumawag sa amin yung Agency Manila. Ang sabi naman po sa amin ng Agency Manila, koma ang ate namin dahil nag-collapse sa CR. So, maya maya lumabas naman po sa social media na heart attack. So, hindi na po namin alam kung anong paniniwalaan namin. Meanwhile, Owa Bicol admitted that they only learned about the case last May 27 through local media reports. They are in close coordination with the family for possible assistance. Una po ng parating po sa amin. So, uh, totoo na may mga inaasikasa po kami na repatriation. Doon sa hinahatid hindi po namin ng mga OSW sa stranded. Pero, uh, hindi po namin kinakabayaan yung mga regular programs namin sa, uh, sa OWA. The family of Biriv, who worries for Gretchen's 9-year-old son, seek for justice and assistance. Sarah, yesterday, Gretchen's body was laid to rest. As of today, results of autopsy from Hong Kong has not yet been released. Sarah? Thank you, Rain Palino. In Pagasinan, four people died after being struck by lightning, while a 47-year-old woman died of heat stroke. More from Russell Simorio of GMA Regional TV, Balitang Amianan. Four individuals died after being hit by lightning in separate incidents in Pangasinan this week. In Mapandan, Pangasinan, two teenagers died a lightning strike in Barangay Acerda. Police officials identified the victims as Maria Veronica Ligtas, 16 years old, and Marilyn Rotor, 15 years old, both residents of National Capital Region. They were playing in the rain when the lightning struck. Police officials say that the victims were stranded in Pangasinan since March after the government imposed over Luzon an enhanced community quarantine. Napansin na lang sila na mga kasama nila na bigla na lang daw sila natumba. Wala naman sila mga sakit. Positive naman na nakidlatan sila ay na rin sa mga doktor. Inasinggan, Pangasinan, a 59-year-old man was also killed by lightning strike in Barangay Bantog. According to the investigation, the victim Gaudencio Taranco went to the field to fetch his goat from the rice field. He was rushed to the hospital but was declared dead on arrival. Amang-ama po talaga kami. Yung dito sa may ngipin niya, dumudugur na siya. Pilit po namin siyang sinusurvive pero talaga wala na bumigay na siya. Nagkataon na uh, parating at ulan at malalakas yung kidlat kahapon, yun na, na natamaan siya ng kidlat. At uh, agaran namang dinala ng mga kaanak sa hospital pero di doon arrival na. In Tayog, Pangasinan, a 21-year-old resident also died after being hit by a lightning in Barangay, Lawak. Initial investigation showed that the victim was hit by lightning while he was standing alongside the road. Meanwhile, a death because of heat stroke was also reported in the province. The victim, Jerilyn Montero, 47 years old, from Barangay Santa Rosa, Santa Maria, Pangasinan, was on her way to the market when she collapsed due to the heat. She was rushed to the hospital but was declared dead on arrival. Napakadelikado po nito kasi uh, yung una, yung heat exhaustion, uh, pwede po itong mag-lead into uh, heat stroke na kung saan pwede po ikamatay ng isang uh, isang tao. I am Russell Simorio for GMA Regional TV. After more than a month of being stranded in Luzon due to the enhanced community quarantine, hundreds of Mindanaoans have finally returned home through the Balik Provincia Program of the National Government. We have Jandi Staban of GMA Regional TV, One Mindanao, for the details live. Jandi! Real, the OWA, DOH, and DOLE have facilitated the return of stranded OFWs to their home provinces via sea vessels and sweeper flights. 
OFWs filled the Ninoy Aquino International Airport after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered government agencies to ensure that the 24,000 OFWs stranded in facilities beyond the quarantine period are sent home within the week. Many welcomed this development but faced a shortage of flights upon arriving at Naia. Peter Cross, an OFW from Davao City, said that on May 25, it took them several hours before they were able to reach the check-in counter, expecting that they have confirmed booking, only to be advised by the airline that there were only two flights booked by OWA going to Davao on that day. It was very frustrating, no? Um, kay we were thinking na nami booking Pauli o provinces, uh, specifically Samoa, uh, going back home to Davao City. But yeah, ito, it appears na moramig chance passengers, moramig Magulat pa na next available flight, wala de may booking for our uh, return to Davao City. So no no manifest uh, given to the airline kung kisa yung maka uli lang. So they were forced to sleep at the airport, waiting for the next flight. Siguro ar around 10 hours, yeah, na pulo ka oras, um, standing and dragging our luggage, pushing our carts para maka abot ni sa. Uh, check-in station. The OWA explained that flights are on a first-come, first-served basis. Yung nagiging problem po natin, yung mga outside the, city, outside the city, no, and even outside the region. Ang isang example po dyan, kapon, meron tayong North Cotabato, meron tayong South Cotabato, meron din tayong Mangagoy. No? So, short notice po talaga. No? So, kailangan mag-adapt, lalo na beyond office hours na yon. In Misamis Oriental, 155 OFWs who were stranded in Metro Manila due to the enhanced community quarantine have finally returned home. They arrived aboard a chartered commercial plane commissioned by the national government. Before leaving Manila, the returning OFWs have gone through the required 14-day quarantine and testing. However, they still have to comply with the local health protocols, which include another 14-day quarantine. Ang ato lang iikwan sa community sa Cagayan de Oro, there is nothing to worry. Kay nag-request man sa city, nga doon ay magtanaw ani nila. Actually, uh, very happy. Kasi makasama na sila. To uh, almost three months, stay away. Anila, so very happy. In Zamboanga del Sur, repatriated OFWs were immediately transported to the Megayon stage of Provincial Government Center in Barangay Dao, Pagadian City for COVID-19 rapid testing. All of them tested negative. In Zamboanga City, 124 stranded OFWs arrived via sweeper flights. Most of them are from Zamboanga City, Zamboanga Sibugay, Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, Basilan, Lanao del Sur, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. In General Santos City, a woman carrying her 10-day-old baby was one of the 102 OFWs who returned home via sweeper flight. She gave birth to her baby in a quarantine facility in Manila. She and other returning OFWs will undergo a mandatory 14-day quarantine before they can return home to their families. The 26 OFWs in Iligan City will also undergo screening before they return to their families. Oh, what are vital signs? What are the temperature? mga symptoms kaya lagi past few days kaya ni travel sila okay lang naman para sa safety ng buong pamilya mo Meanwhile, 92 repatriated OFWs on board a sea vessel disembarked at the port of Nasipit in Agusan del Norte. 15 of them are from Nasipit, 2 are from Buena Vista, 4 from Kabadbaran, 4 from Habunga, 3 from Kicharao, 1 from Tubay, and 1 from Magallanes. Real, according to the Department of Labor and Employment, that as of today, May 30, more than 22,000 overseas Filipino workers stranded in different quarantine facilities have so far been transported to their respective hometown. OWA had so far spent over 700 million pesos for the repatriation, transport, accommodation, and food for the OFWs. Real. Thank you, Jandi Esteban. The entire central Visayas is now under general community quarantine based on the IATF decision. With the loosening of quarantine restrictions, stranded persons in different areas have finally returned to their home provinces. 
Alan Domingo of GMA Regional TV Balitang Bisdak for the details live. Alan! Tech LGUs are now preparing to transition to the new normal under GCQ. Just this morning, Cebu City has been uh, included in the list of the areas that will be on GCQ starting uh, June 1. A lot of adjustments will have to be made, but health protocols are still in effect. Effective June 1, the whole of Central Desires will now be under GCQ, including Cebu City, which was earlier reported to be placed under MECQ. The city has been under ECQ since March 28. Cebu City is now preparing for the return of some businesses. Under GCQ, public transportation is still suspended, which is why the Cebu City government fielded 200 buses to ferry around workers of establishments that will be reopening. Nadili na mandatory ang pag-undergo og testing. Apan encourage na, of course, for the safety sa mga empleyado, for the safety sa mga employers, sa ilang tagsa-tagsa ka mga trabahuan. Companies are encouraged to provide shuttle services for their employees. Company ID and work certifications are needed for those living outside but are working in Cebu City. Barber shops, parlors, gyms, and other businesses that requires physical contact are still not allowed to operate. Cebu ports are still closed for inter-island travel. <laughs> In Cebu City, 400 OFW on lockdown in Manila arrived in Cebu aboard two ships. Most of these OFWs are seafarers observing physical distancing. The OFWs alighted one by one from the vessel. They all went through health processes and proper documentation. As part of the protocol, they were brought to hotels where they will undergo another 14-day quarantine before they can finally make their way back home. In Lapu Lapu City, 154 OFW stranded in Manila arrived at the Mactan Airport last May 26. 14 of these OFWs are Opunganuns. The passengers brought with them documents like medical certificates as proof that they are negative for COVID-19 after undergoing a 14-day quarantine while in Manila. Lapu Lapu City Mayor Jonard Ahong Chan was not happy with the DILG directive requiring LGUs to shoulder cost of the swamp test and pay for the quarantine of OFWs who lack documentation. The mayor said the city doesn't have enough funds for the returning OFWs. In Negros Oriental, the LGU is awaiting the results of the swamp test of the 168 crew members of a fishing vessel from Palawan. Dr. Lilandi Station, Assistant Provincial Health Officer and Ground Commander of the Interagency Task Force in Negros Oriental said that they already sent last tweak the swamp test to Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center Sub-National Laboratory. In Sikihor, borders are now open. This is in compliance to the DILG order that provinces should now accept the returning OFWs. Sikihor Governor Zaldi Villa gave an assurance that the whole island will be safe from the pandemic as it remains to be COVID-free in the whole region 7. So, in Palo Leyte, workers who lost their jobs at the national capital region arrived back in the province. Most of them availed of the Balik Provincia program. The workers were brought to the government center in Palo to undergo the required processes. The LGU has prepared some livelihood and skills training for these returnees. Tech uh, Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia had a meeting with the town and city mayors uh, for uh, the province plan to appeal with the IATF for the province to be downgraded from GCQ to MGCQ starting June 1st. Tech. Thank you, Alan Domingo. GMA Regional TV has launched its first ever Kapuso Barangayan on Wheels, aiming to reach out to communities in this time of pandemic. Said Free Kabaluna of GMA Regional TV 1 Western Visayas tells us more. 
On its 70th anniversary, the GMA Network through GMA Regional TV continues to win the hearts of Filipino audiences through its genuine public service. In Iloilo City, 100 households were given free breakfast during the first Kapuso Barangayan on Wheels. True to its commitment of serving local communities, especially in this time of the coronavirus pandemic, GMA Regional TV Western Visayas spearheaded the first Kapuso Barangayan on Wheels. GMA Regional TV teams, including one Western Visayas anchors and correspondents, helped in preparing the food packs for the residents of Barangay Bacau, Manduriao, in Iloilo City. Together with the members of the Philippine Army and volunteers from Barangay Bacau, the Kapuso Barangayan on Wheels team proceeded to the area for the food distribution. The Punong Barangay expressed his gratitude after 100 households were given free breakfast. Ako nagpasalamat gid in behalf sa pumuloy sa Barangay Bakaw sa inyo pagkare diri sa amon sa paghatag sining mga uh, pagkaon nga uh, uh, nakaabot gid sa amon pumuloy gan in behalf sa pumuloy ako nagpasalamat gid sa GMA Kapuso ka Barangay on Wells during the distribution the team made sure that everyone involved followed safety protocols such as wearing of PPEs and face mask Barangay Bakaw is just the first of the many barangays that the Kapuso Barangay on Wheels will visit Joining the entire Kapuso community, GMA Regional TV continues its promise of being buong puso para sa Pilipino in its efforts to reach out to various communities across the Philippines. Together with cameraman Marvin Lauderes, said Free Cabaluna for GMA Regional TV. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. This is GMA Regional TV Weekend News. Christmas came early for some people in Davao City after a Santa soldier made relief giving rounds all around the city. Let's get to know him in this report. It's not yet Christmas, but there's already a Santa roaming around the city. However, this version is without the signature beard and clad in green fatigues. This Santa is not giving away gifts but relief packs and financial aid to those in need. Meet Army Reservist Major Danilo Montemayor of 22nd Ready Reserve Infantry Brigade, also known as Santa Soldier. Sa kadatong naibala na ako na daghang kayang wala ka ambit sa mga grasya po na pagtabang, Motong naka-decide po ng sweldo na ako, ihatagid na ako aron makatabang sa isig katao na ang lain na wagyod. He also helps his fellow frontliners by giving them face masks, shields, and food while on duty. To be away from his family is a huge sacrifice for Major Montemayor. People applaud him for this sacrifice and this dedication to serve the needy. Hi, you're the best father in the whole world. I love you. Proud kayo ni Simo. Santa Soldier said that in these trying times, selfless acts of compassion must prevail. We would like to thank everyone from around the Philippines for watching tonight's episode. You can watch this episode and more on GMA Regional TV's official YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button to get the hottest news from the regions. And that was the biggest and the latest news from the regions. Thank you for joining us and from all of us here in Mindanao. This has been GMA Regional TV Weekend News, where local news matters. Stay safe and stay home.